Category one, the teetotaler. Now, whilst it would be nice to fall into one of the uh, the followings, uh, the following sections, I'm pretty sure um, this has to be the ultimate realistic aim of any real alcoholic or anyone with a drinking problem. I'm actually now a teetotaler, uh, which I'm very proud of. Um, these can be reformed alcoholics, people who can't drink, health freaks, figure of speech, um, and people who simply just don't like the taste. So, uh, you know, my hats are off to the latter, you know, for not following people into society, into alcohol is everything. So, the teetotaler, hats off. Moving on, category two is the toaster. So, the toaster is in good company with the teetotaler. However, you know, whilst the hardcore teetotaler will turn down a drink, you know, at a sherry, at a wedding, he'll say, well, what part of an adult drink don't you understand? The toaster will actually take it a taste and take a drink just for the cause. Ah, the Mila. The Mila. This is a good place to be. The Mila likes to compliment their food with, say, a glass of wine or a ripe beer, depending on the, you know, the, the, the food that they're eating, whether it's cheese, we'll have a nice red. And somewhat of a connoisseur at heart, the Mila understands the limitations and generally won't venture beyond that. Fabulous. Category four, the now and againer. The now and againer is up for special occasions, but somewhat on the fence. You know, when it comes to the love of alcohol, they can take it or leave it. They're not really bothered. You know, these are the guys that are at the works party. They end up getting smashed and going on with, you know, half the clothes missing and things like that because they don't normally drink. But they can also be, I guess, quite responsible, you know, when they know when it's time to stop. Uh, there is a but because there's always a risk of keeping down a level or up a level, you know, when the now and againer is usually a binge so be careful because if your now and again is a binge you're on a slippery slope the weekender now we've all been there these are usually the younger starters and these days the weekend starts on a thursday so if this is continued all weekend then you're into binge territory that's coming up soon um, most people have surely drifted in and out of this stage whether it's in the youth or through a midlife crisis if you're like me i've had a few of them um, you know the weekenders they're often influenced by the peers and most people work during the week so you know the weekender will have a few days off um, and what does society tell us that we need alcohol for social occasions so we're going out at the weekend and we're going to have a few beers or we're going to have a glass of wine now let's get together and you know it, it revolves around alcohol that's the weekender moving on from the wine uh, from the weekender is the wine down and weekender now as you get older you know the weekends yes you're still going to have the weekends they're your thing but it might be that you get the kids in bed you've had a shitty day at work you want to relax after work so what do you do society says you relax with a glass of wine or you relax with a beer now this is this is the wind down and weekender because this is important because these people are starting to increase their intake without even realizing um, and now they need to be extra cautious because the amount of alcohol that's taken that adds up and adds up, it increases all the um, tolerance levels within you and I'm afraid, you know, you need to be careful because you're onto a slippery slope into the next category which is the, 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 the big one as far as I'm concerned um, and that's the binge drinker. Now, the binge drinker as you'll see will be because it's such a category I've had to think about this because you can't just be classified as a binge drinker so there's cat one cat two and cat three see what you think of the binge drinker ah uh, the infamous binge drinker now this is by far the biggest and most complex category when I've been thinking about this um, and it spreads across all the remaining levels and can even go back a level up to category four to the now and againer. Um, such a complicated category, it must be broken down. Um, so here goes, 
um, category one, two and three. Category one, this can be from level four when the now and again, as I mentioned before, is usually a binge um, and the hangovers linger. So you, you could go for weeks, months, whatever without a drink. But when you do, it's always a binge and you end up hammered. So you are, I'm afraid, a binge drinker, category one. Hmm, the category two. Pretty much every time they drink is a binge. You know, that, that the what's the point in going out for a drink if we're not going to get rat assed and paint the town kind of people. You know, this middle binger will always take alcohol to an event unless they clearly cannot drink because they're driving on medication, in which case they'll usually sit there like, you know, that, uh, with a face like a smacked ass. Um, you know, all night basically because they're not drinking and everyone else is, so they may as well not fucking bother. Um, you know, they'll always bank the next binge opportunity, and whether they realize it or not, they're probably dependent. And the thing about alcohol, um, you, you know, they're, they're thinking about it all the time, and the problems are brewing, pardon the pun, in relationships, pardon the pun, I like that, but the problems are. They're starting to show if they're not already within relationships and you know they they miss out through hangover and they have the occasional blackouts and a regular regular occurrence anymore they're not occasional so the category two is you can get you get the theme everything's going and it's getting worse and worse my lovely people you are looking at a category three um Category three binger. I mean, this is hardcore. This is, you know, this will continue to the end if you're not reined in on time. The iron binger, once started, will struggle to slot, stop. I had an on off switch um, and it was the demise because basically it, it didn't bloody work. Um, and while many a person, you know, on the drinking scale are in the middle category binger, they'll have a break in between and, you know, they'll feel rough for the next day. But the high end category three, then, you know, I would carry on. I'd spend the night in a hotel room after drinking all the way through to passing out, and then I'll wake up in the morning and there'll be a bottle of wine, and I'll think, oh, and then I'll have a big slug of it, and then I'll carry on. Um, off we go again. As you can imagine, these type of bingers, um, they're risking the health, the job, you know, the love life, they're heading for disaster, and they're likely to be close to, or already have lost one or all three, um, whether that's the job, you know, the health or, or the love life wrecked. Um, I came very close and luckily for me, you know, this was my rock bottom. And this category is the rock bottom of many people. And up to the point, you know, they have the, the notion to fight back. They'll carry on. If they don't fight back and do something about it, they will carry on. And you'll see in the following that this slippery slope just goes on and on until the end I'm afraid category 8 the day tripper now I could possibly have been tiptoeing into this but this is a confusing category the day tripper is you know it's very hard to pinpoint it's someone that drinks every day and it matters not what time of day it is but whilst the day tripper you know, has obviously had their share of, uh, of big binges in life. Now it's just basically one huge binge. The tolerance levels are high, they're through the roof. The dependence has its grip, hence the morning take of alcohol. Bizarrely, day trippers, and this is, the, this, is, this is how fucked up alcohol can be. The day trippers, they're often um, lucky enough not to have fucked themselves over so much that they've, they've still got careers, they're still holding down a job and maybe some other small responsibilities. However, the day tripper probably you know, has a list of relationship problems and likely lives alone. Um, I'm guessing, I don't know, but it, it, it's probable. Um, the functioning alcoholic, as an example, falls into this category. You know, the, the day simply cannot be imagined without a regular tipple. So people, we move on to the 
category nine out of controller and if you haven't figured out already then there is a uh, a downward spiral i'm afraid um and it it just gets it gets worse so i mean unfortunately the out of controller you know the poor blighter could have lost the job the marriage basically their own self-respect you know they're probably one step away or already struggling to keep a roof over their heads the alcohol has gripped them so bad that you know even if they if they as long as they can get a drink they don't really give a toss um, and what is sad is that most of society and this is important that most of society you know who don't understand the illness you know that is alcoholism or or you know if you don't want to call it an illness fine you know I, I don't really care but they don't understand it but this is the person that they probably think of as the alcoholic you know, scruffy looking, lonely, stinks of stale booze, wanders around, lost, and you know, is in fact, he's a bum, you know, a down and out loser. But what's not understood, and again, this really frustrates me, is the emotional torment inside that's led them to this state. And, you know, the emotional torment now, when the demon demands that they pour yet more of this crap, this poison, this ethanol, down their, you know, into their, down their necks and into the bodies. I don't know. For some, you know, they really have had it all and thrown it away. And this is where it kind of hits home because, you know, that could have been me. If I hadn't have found my rock bottom beforehand, it, it could have been me and it could be you. Um, it's, you know, it, it's really sad. And, you know, it's all down to your circumstance or whether you're just unlucky, you know, you if you are lucky actually forget the unlucky if you're lucky you might have someone that still wants to help you you know but you, you absolutely you absolutely and this is it and this is true throughout them all actually this statement that i'm gonna make now that you have to want to stop if you've given up if you don't really want to stop then it's game over and you're back down this is last chance saloon pardon the pun <laughs> it is last chance saloon um and for the outer controller you know, and it's surely the surely the last chance of it in any kind of rock bottom because the next category, that's it. And this is it, um, the final category. You know, if uh, if you've got to this category, then you're watching me as a ghost because sadly, this is game over. Your body is clearly packed up. You're not motivated to go on whatsoever. You'd rather be dead, um, regardless whether you're aware of it or not. You know, there have been many times, many times for this this category, where you could have turned the corner. You know, you could have turned the corner to recovery, um, but all you can do now is wait for your fate. Whether that's going to be a hospital bed, a ditch, a park, you know, who knows? But the corner that once offered a different direction has long gone and there is no way back. And I'm afraid that's it. That's the end. So there it is.